What up, it's your boy, The Truth 31. Hit like, subscribe for all that DC goodness on your face, neck, and chest. And fun fact, Superman Earth 1 was the first book I picked up as my reintroduction into the DC Comics world. Funnily enough, Man of Steel was the first Superman movie, DC film, that got me back into comics. And it's funny because Man of Steel and Superman Earth 1 both have very eerily similar vibes to it i know man of steel was released in 2013 and this book superman earth um earth one was i think released in 2010 but they feel so much like the same because superman earth one is a more uh realistic depiction of clark kent superman in modern metropolis and this is written by j michael straczynski hope i pronounced that right who's a great writer by the way and j writer uh straczynski wanted to make the Man of Steel world a little more uh, realistic, wanted to make it feel more real world. You know, the Metropolis is set as like, a, in most comics, like it's more like a futuristic, you know, art deco type. And J, and J. Michael just wanted to make Metropolis feel more real. Thank you, Airplane, for making your grand introduction. Plan safely. But he wanted to make it feel more real, more real world. And he wanted to make the characters less goofy and just more like us and i think that's what really helps make this comic book stand out from all the all the other superman comics like this feels like what would happen just like man of steel what would happen if a real world alien came into our planet and just lived among us how would we react does superman have uh a, a bets a, a bet signal just like like batman like how would we contact him like like this story and instead of you know making like superman like superman right off the bat j michael takes a more you know realistic realistic approach he makes clark into an athlete he makes him into a scientist he makes him you know more grounded and more instead of you know saving people and like from burning buildings and stuff like that he's like well, what if i you know just made a cure for cancer what if i became rich and became an athlete what if i oh i don't know just did regular citizen stuff with with my superhuman abilities Again, just makes the character more, more grounded. What if I, if I was a construction worker? Like, what if I worked in stocks and finances? <laughs> you know, like stuff that we wouldn't, stuff like we that we normally wouldn't think of Clark Kent doing. Like instead of you know putting on a costume and saving people from burning buildings and saving cats from trees, what if he just did regular stuff like we all did, like r regular work type job stuff? And it, and that little you know detail. It's like very intriguing. It's like, oh yeah, I wouldn't, I never even, I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even have thought of that. It's like, why hasn't anyone done that in film? <laughs> like, why haven't we seen you know stuff like this you know portrayed, but by, by Clark Kent like in, in these in these films? But again, it's a nice little detail that J. Michael does. And again, instead of like you know, you know, instead of you know Clark Kent with the glasses and the overstuffed suit, he just makes him look like us. Like you know, like comes to work, you know, with jeans, you know, shirt tie tucked in. And, you know, glasses, you know, hair all a little messy, sort of like a 20 year old emo kid. But, you know, again, makes it more relatable during this period of time. And there's a great, wonderful scene where, again, this this panel right here where where Kat, Clark, Clark Kent feels alienated. He feels alone and he takes you know comfort in this stray cat that he takes in and takes care of. And unfortunately, the cat passes away. And now Clark Kent feels alone again. So what he does is he takes the cat up to the moon, puts a cross on it, and always as soon as as he always looks up to the moon and to the stars, it reminds him of his favorite cat, the one that passed away. I, I thought that was like a really touching human moment for this alien Clark Kent. And again, it, it humanizes Clark Kent so much more in a relatable way because we all, we've all had pets, we've all lost pets, unfortunately, and and the fact that this touches on it again really makes. Clark Kent more relatable, more human. And again, this book really delves into Clark Kent. Who is this kid? Why am I here? What's my path? What should I do? Again, very similar to Man of Steel. Very similar. It's just like, like this book does a great job of humanizing Clark Kent. What makes him not only humanizing him, but modernizing him. Clark Kent in the 2000s. Clark Kent right now. What would that look like? Again, Man of Steel did the same thing in this book, and this book does it brilliantly. Makes the characters grounded. This whole world is grounded. Clark Kent is not this perfect superhero who knows what to do and knows everything. No, he gets angry. He gets upset. He makes mistakes. You know? 
again, and I know some people don't like that, but that's what Superman, that's what I love about Superman. He's not this godlike figure who knows all the answers, who knows what to do every single time. This is a younger take on Clark Kent. This is a younger take on Superman. This is a, a fresh take on the character. What would that be like in the real world? How would he react with us? He gets, he's, again, he makes mistakes. He gets angry. You know, there's there's a silent, uh, sort of brutish, uh, rate not rage but he doesn't take any crap from anyone like if you like this like there's a panel where a criminal you know holds him up at gunpoint and he, and there's a great shot of just a close-up of clark kent's eyes getting red it's like look don't fuck with me bro <laughs> like, like i'm giving you a chance back off and again it just shows and of, of course some superman purists will probably get upset at that but like superman would never threaten a guy with, with, with his laser eyes and stuff like that it's like relax again this is a Original take by J. Michael Trzyski. He, he he's he's modernizing the take. He's modernizing the character, which is again, which is what you should do. And there's also a flashback scene to where Martha Kent um, makes a uniform for him as as a gift. Uh, um, you know, as she's like hoping that like you know he he will take it and you know become the symbol stuff like that. And, and he he looks at it and she's like. And he's like, shouldn't there be a mask? Like, shouldn't I wear a mask like this? Sort of like Batman. Like, and and mom's like, no, like no, like you're here for good. You're not here for harm. You shouldn't wear a mask. You, you shouldn't hide who you. You shouldn't. You shouldn't hide who you are. You are, like we we love you. You're our son. We don't want you to hide. That's not what. Not, that's not what this is about. And again, it just shows the dynamic between and the differences between Batman and Superman. Batman will hide. You know, like, you know, he's a vigilante. People are scared of him. Superman shouldn't be scared of anyone. And people shouldn't be afraid of Superman. Super Superman is a symbol of hope. Superman is a symbol of justice. You don't need a mask for what? No. No, you're our son. We we know who you are. And you're here for good. And again, it just shows uh, lo that, that loving relationship between uh, Clark Kent and his parents is, is really depicted here in a realistic manner. In a sweet, realistic manner. It's so good. And you it's funny because Lois Lane, obviously, I love this Lois Lane, brash, you know, gets things done. But she's also drawn like Jeff Jennifer Carpenter, which is like kind of weird. I don't know if J. Michael has a crush on Jennifer Carpenter because <laughs> he he drew her exactly like this. If, for, if you know if you don't know who Jennifer Car uh, Carpenter is, uh, if you ever seen Dexter, the TV show with Michael C. Hall, she plays his sister and looks exactly like her. So I don't know if. J. Michael used her as a frame of reference for this, but obviously it's brilliant done, brilliantly done. And there's a big bad who comes to Metropolis, like an alien armada, but by the name of Tyrell. And there's an intriguing subplot, um, intriguing uh, development where he comes from Krypton and he tells Clark like Krypton well, wasn't destroyed by an accident. It was actually an assassination. And, and Tyrell comes exactly like Zod, Michael Shannon, where he threatens the world, threatens to, uh, uh, until, you know, you expose yourself to the world. Ex to, you know, because you know, I know there's a Krypton citizen here and you better bow down to me as, and, and expose who you are. Again, very similar to Man of Steel. There's even a, a scene in a panel here where it looks like Superman in the world engine scene. It, it looks like beat for beat. So I, again, it's fucking weird. Like it's so similar to Man of Steel. I don't know if they have if, if they had connections or not, conversations or not, but it's so weird. But anyway, Superman Earth Volume One. I highly, highly recommend it if you're a Superman fan. If you're not a Superman fan, if you're looking for a Superman book to get into, I highly recommend this one. So there you go. I'm done. Truth out. Smash the like button, subscribe, read comics, read DC comics, and pick this one up because you will not be disappointed if you're a Superman fan. If you're not a Superman fan, go pick this one up.